Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to configure some inputs and outputs on our basic controller and smart controllers. In order to do this we need a few things beforehand. Firstly we need to download the latest firmware on the controller. Secondly you need the CanFox programming cables and thirdly we need Codices version 2.3 in order to download the program onto the basic and the smart controller. So in order to download the latest version of Codices, please go on to the IFM website. Once you're on there, then click on Service, Downloads, and then click on Mobile Machines. And then scroll down and you will see in section 1.1, you've got Codices version 2.39.42 package. So please register and download this onto your PC. And once it's fully downloaded, if you can install it, then we are ready to go to the next step. All right, the next step is now if you double click on your Codices icon and it should come up with this window. And then the first step would be say file and say new from template you will find this template folder is installed by Codices itself. So then if you scroll down and look for your controller, in my case I am programming a CR0403, so I use CR0403 layer 2 version 3, and that indicates the firmware version that I'm running on the controller. So select that and click open. Uh, the reason we use the template is because it has all the libraries required by the basic controller already in there. So if you go to resources and library manager, double click on library manager, you will see that we have all the necessary libraries required. Okay, and that there is one of the most important library which we call the CR0403 device library. And in there we have all the function blocks required to configure inputs and outputs. So today we will be covering some very basic inputs and outputs like a digital input and an analog input. And in the outputs we will be covering uh, a digital output and PWM outputs. Alright, so we start with first of all create a new folder and rename the folder saying io underscore configuration once you've done that right click on that folder and say add object and type in input underscore config and it's up to you what language you want to program in but for this video I will demonstrate it in function block so once you've done this just say okay and now we are in the programming area and you will see your program is up here. Now we add a box, so we right click, add a box. So now we are going to configure our first input to be a digital input. Now in order to configure my first input as a digital input, I go to resources, go to library manager and I need to use that function block. That function block is input function block and these are the different mode that it supports all right so we are going to configure a binary input low side input today okay so now we know for binary input low side we need the mode to be number 10 all right so we go back to the POU and instead of and we now type in and replace it by input give a name to this particular instance of the function block and click enter then enable is true the channel should correspond to the channel or where you have connected your sensor in my case the digital input is connected to channel 0 so I make it 0 and my mode once again if I need to know the mode I just right click on input function block and click zoom it takes me directly to the library select input and you can see the mode now is number 10 so make the mode number 10 and I delete this part now this value which is the output variable is a word uh, 
you can use it as a word but since it's a boolean value i just add uh, another box so right click and say box and then make it word underscore two underscore boolean and then right click assign and just say x prox and declare the variable as a local variable to start with all right so that's the setup for um, our first input which is the digital input now the next step is we will now create uh, an analog input so now we right click and we say network after and then we add another box right click insert box and this time again name it input and give an instance name fp input 01 enter enter then type in true channel 1 because I've got my analog input connected to channel 1 now we right click and go zoom so my sensor is basically set up for current input so I keep the mode number as 7 mode 7 and the filter setting is recommended as 4 and now since it's an analog value we don't need to convert it into a, a boolean so we just take the raw value we just right click and assign and we just say word uh, analog enter and just change the type to a word and say okay so that now is uh, our input setup done so now i will go to plc prg and call this particular call the input config function block and that should be ready so we go to project and build some errors and now we go to online communication parameters and we select 127 and a baud rate of 250 so this should match to the node ID and baud rate of your controller in my case it's 127 and the baud rate is 250 I just say okay and then I go online again yes I want to download the program download and run so you can already see on an analog channel we are getting a roughly 4 milliamps because it's a 4 to 20 milliamp sensor that I have connected so if I now change the value so you can see the value go up to 20 milliamps so the value that you see here is in microamps so it goes from 4000 microamps to 20,000 microamps now in order to show you now the digital input you will see that now if I you can see the prox turning on and off so this way you can configure your input to be digital analog or resistance so you just need to look in the library manager under input function block what modes it can be what modes can be used essentially to configure those input channels okay now the next is to set up the output so once again we right click on IO configuration folder add object and we say output configuration this time and again we select function block and program and once you're happy with this just click on OK and again we are in the programming window now so we will add our first function block just right click on the network add a box and in order to configure uh, an output as a digital output you just use an output function block we give it a name zero zero so we give that true channel 
is zero. Value is, this would be the variable that will actually trigger the output. So this could be x out zero, and you define that as a Boolean value. And the mode, once again, you just right click on output, zoom, and select output function block this time. And then in our case, we just select number two as we just want to be a binary output high side. All right, we're going back to the program. So we make the mode two and the filter as four. The next one is to configure a PWM output. So let's add a network after. Again, add a box, but this time we use PWM1000 function block to configure the output to be a PWM channel. Again, let's name this FV output 01. Be enable true again the channel is the, the channel you want to drive as a PWM so that would be one the PWM frequency is basically device dependent so this should usually be mentioned in the the data sheet of the of the valve that you're trying to control I'm just going to use 250 and the value here is the value from 0 to 1000 which drives the valve from fully opened, fully closed, for example. Okay, so the value here would be value, and this should be a word. The data frequency and the data value again is dependent on uh, the data sheet provided by the manufacturer. If you need it, then you have to put the data frequency and data value. All right, so now once you've done this, uh, we just need to call the output configuration again in the main program. So we add a box and call output configuration. And now we can go and build the project. So that's all good. Go back here and then we log in. Yes, the program has changed, download the program. Once that's done, you just click on online and run. Let me just expand this here. And what we do now is in my case, I'm just going to force the value here and X output call F7 or you can just go online and say write value and you will see as soon as I trigger this the actual output on the controller has been triggered on and the result is one which means it is it is uh, successfully turned on the output similarly if I want to turn it off uh, double click online and write value now it's off and in the case of a PWM value I just double click and again I'm going to force it so I can make it 500 and again I write the value and you can see the result is 1 and yeah if you have a valve connected you will also see a current feedback in this case. Alright so in this video I have shown you very basic configuration of inputs and outputs uh, using Again, input function blocks, output function block, and PWM1000 function block. I hope this was useful, and thank you very much. IFM, close to you.